this blog is called Hope Over Fear. But we can also think of it as hope and sorrow. Last week, the pain and sorrow of COVID hit home in our church family with the death of David Gerberich. He was the son of our friends, Bill and Debbie. And so we grieve. But as Paul said, we don't grieve as those who have no hope. Now, in emphasizing our hope at this time, I don't want to minimize the sorrow and the sense of loss for David's family and his friends. In fact, I understand a little of what they're going through. Because my own father died suddenly at the age of 33. It was just two years after arriving in East Pakistan to work in Bible translation. I was seven at the time. My sisters were five and three, and our family experienced that loss, that sorrow of losing a husband and a father. But in that, we also experienced the wonders of God's grace in sustaining us and in meeting our every need. We know from experience the promise of God's word that he's a defender of widows. He cares. He's a father to the fatherless. And I know that Rachel and Penny, Bill and Debbie, Amy, the whole family will experience that aspect of God's character and his love as well. And our family saw God at work in amazing ways the time that my dad died and afterwards. At the time of his death, <clears throat> there was a man working for us named Dabindro. He did the laundry and a lot of other things around the house. And my father had shared God's word with him. Recently, he had become a believer in Jesus. He was amazed when he watched the time of my dad's illness, his sickness and his death. Our family and others there were gathered around him, singing songs, reading scripture, encouraging each other. He couldn't believe it because when Hindus died, that wasn't the way they acted as all, at all. He was used to people screaming, yelling, falling on the floor in absolute sorrow. When he saw my dad's death, he was amazed and he ran to get his wife and said, you've got to come here and see this. You have to watch the way a Christian dies. She did. She was awestruck and she placed her faith in Jesus Christ. At the time of my dad's death, she received new life. I know something else about my father's death that gives me hope and encouragement. And that is, even though he died at age 33, he didn't die at the prime of life. In fact, it was only after his death that he entered the prime of his life. In fact, none of us reaches the prime of life until we enter Jesus' presence. In a way, what we experience now is preparation for an even fuller life. What we have is an appetizer that whets our appetite for the feast to come in Jesus' presence. So right now, David has just entered his prime and that, not avoiding Corona, is the true basis of our hope. Our hope is based on some really good news that is found in 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 13 to 15, where Paul says, brothers and sisters, we don't want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind. You have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive and who are left until the coming of the Lord will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. Did you catch the way death is referred to in these verses? Jesus calls it sleep. 
For we who have placed our faith in Jesus, death is a temporary, as temporary as sleep. When Jesus first heard of Lazarus' illness, he said, this illness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory. Because of Jesus' death and resurrection, our death isn't the end, but the beginning. As Jesus said, after his good friend Lazarus has, had died, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep and I'm going to wake him up. And that's just what he did. He stood in front of Lazarus' grave crying. But then he shouted, Lazarus, come out! And Lazarus did just that. And now he's done the same thing for David. His sickness did not end in death. Jesus has given him the best kind of wake-up call. David fell asleep. And then Jesus woke him up and welcomed him into his presence. And that is our source of hope in our time of sorrow. One of my recent devotionals was called The Ultimate Immunity, and in it I used this incident to show how Jesus has given us immunity to death. Now, we will die, but all of us who believe will live even though we die. Because Jesus will bring us into a new life. So although we're not immune to COVID, we are immune to death because death cannot harm us. For us, no sickness will end in death. We will simply pass through it into Jesus' presence. Death is as temporary as sleep. Jesus will say, wake up and join me. And like Lazarus, like my dad, and now like David, we will do that. Now that is a wake up call we can look forward to. And then as Paul goes on to say, after waking, we'll be with the Lord forever. And so, brothers and sisters, let's encourage each other with these words.